Hello and welcome back to Granberry Volunteer Fire Department's Online Fire Academy. In today's module, we're going to cover Section 4, Fire Hose Practices. And we're going to go in detail on just the different types of hose on the apparatus, how to roll the hose, how to clean the hose, how to use the hose, and then just different sizes, scenarios, and situations that where we're going to use the fire hose on scene. Again, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, make sure you write them down. And as usual, I am Matt Hohan, Captain of Operations here at Granbury. Without further ado, let's start. Sizes, types, amounts, and use of hose carried on fire apparatus. This slide's entirely subjective to your department and the apparatus that you're referring to. You guys need to go and become very familiar with the hose sizes and the hose lengths that you have on your apparatus. Your typical fire engine here in Granbury is going to carry a hand line that's an inch and three quarters. That's the hose diameter. The coupling diameter is going to be an inch and a half. We also carry two inch hose. That's a diameter of two inches but the coupling is going to be an inch and a half. And then we also carry two and a half inch hose, and the diameter of the hose is two and a half inches, and the coupling is two inches. And then lastly, we also carry supply line, which is five inches, and it's got a five inch coupling. Again, really familiarize yourself with your apparatus and know what hose you carry on there. Your brush trucks are not going to carry the same hose as your engines. Use of nozzles, adapters, and appliances carried on our local fire apparatus. Again, I don't know what you're carrying on your trucks. The best way to know what nozzles, what adapters, and what appliances you're carrying is physically going to your station and physically going through the truck with someone and have them break it down for you. Now, when I talk about nozzles, I'm talking about the nozzles that we use here in Granbury. And we use two types of nozzles here in Granbury for 99% of our firefighting. We have an automatic nozzle, which is an adjustable stream nozzle. And that nozzle, I'm going to be able to select a straight stream, I'm going to be able to select a fog, or I'm going to be able to select a power cone. And we're going to go in a lot more detail on what each of those terms mean and how to actually operate the nozzle. Now, a smoothbore nozzle is going to be an, a nozzle that just attaches to the to the actual handheld portion of the nozzle and it's going to just shoot one type of stream of water out of the nozzle. It's literally a straight stream of water. Now we do have some larger nozzles and those are called master stream devices and those are typically going to be found on like the deck gun which is going to have a smooth bore or our blitz fires which may have a smooth bore or automatic nozzle attached to it. Again, we're going to go in detail on how to use those when we do the skills portion of this class. Now, water valves. There's a million different types of valves out there, and each truck's going to carry a different assortment of valves for different reasons. Typically, in Granberry, the most common valves you're going to see are gated valves, ball valves, and pistons. All of these valves have different uses and applications on the trucks. And again, we're going to go in detail through that with you on the skills section. As far as adapters go, every truck out there is going to have various adapters for different needs. And the first adapter we're going to start with is just a double mail adapter. That's an adapter that's going to be used to combine two pieces of hose or maybe attach the hose to the truck. And the physical adapter itself is going to be threaded on both sides. Now a double female adapter is the same concept. It's going to be used to attach two different hoses or attach the hose to the truck. And the double female is going to have two screw-in threaded adapters. A reducer is used from going from a two and a half inch hose 
to an inch and three quarter hose. You're just physically using the adapter to reduce the hose size and connect them. An increaser is exactly the opposite. Maybe we want to go from an inch and three quarter hose to a three inch hose. Same concept. It's just increasing from the inch and three quarter to the two and a half inch hose. Elbows are typically used on the side of the apparatus, from the discharge panel to the actual hose. Instead of having the hose come out at 90 degrees and then due to gravity drop to the ground and kinking the hose right there at the truck, the elbows add a 45 degree angle so the hose doesn't kink. Caps are simply used to just cap off different discharges on the apparatus. You may also use it to cap one side of a valve. Caps are used in various places. Plugs are the exact same as caps. They just physically screw in to a female a, a valve. If you have any questions on anything that you have on your apparatus, make sure you write them down, take a picture of it, bring it to the, to the academy, and we'll answer those questions. Hose appliances. Now this is something that you do carry on your truck, but they're typically going to be used on a department that has multiple apparatus, and those apparatus are going to be potentially responding to larger fires. And the most common type of appliances that we're going to see is going to be a water thief or a gated Y. And at the top right, you see a picture of a, of a water thief, and it's just a big line or a big appliance that connects to a big line, and then you can physically take smaller lines off to the sides and steal water from the larger lines. That's where water thieves are used at. Wise are the same principle. They're typically used on the discharge of an apparatus. So let's say you have a two and a half inch discharge and the, th the Y will reduce down to an inch and a half coupling and you'll be able to run two lines off of that one line. Now, hose tools. There's gonna be a ton of different hose tools that are gonna be on your apparatus for use. Spanner wrenches are going to be used for loosening or tightening the threaded couplings on the hose. You may also use them to physically loosen an adapter from a hose or from the pump panel. A hydrant wrench, you're going to take a hydrant wrench and use it to take the caps off of a hydrant or open and close the valve on a hydrant. Hose strap, hose rope, and hose chain are all different forms of tools that you can use to physically move the hose or hold the hose down. Now a hose roller <clears throat> excuse me, is going to be used for lifting the hose after use and helping to squeeze all the water out of after use and be able to load the hose back on the truck. A hose jacket is used anytime that there is a hole in the hose and you're going to take the hose jacket and case the hose with the jacket and cinch it down and tighten it up and it's a quick fix to a leaky hose. A hose clamp is typically associated with use on large supply lines. Now, you may have a structure fire on a busy road, and you can take a supply line and lay the supply line across the road because the hydrant's across the street. Well, maybe you have emergency traffic or you need to move positioning of apparatus and you need to physically shut the line down really quick and get the water out of the hose so apparatus can drive across the hose. The, so the hose clamp is physically going to clamp down on the hose and so you can still leave the hydrant on and you don't have to disconnect the hose from the hydrant. And this will allow traffic to pass over the hose. On a side note, you really don't want to use hose clamps. I'm not going to go into the full detail of hose clamps. They are efficient. The problem with the hose clamp is when you need to physically take it off and off the hose, but the hose is charged off the hydrant. It's basically a loaded bomb, and it's just waiting for you to accidentally trigger the releasing mechanism, and the hose clamp's going to go flying. 
Now, a hose suction strainer, that's going to be used for drafting operations. And that's going to take your drafting hose, you're going to throw it into, a, let's say, a river or a lake. Well, that water source is going to be filled with a whole bunch of debris, and you don't want that being sucked up into the pump. So you're going to put some type of strainer on the hose just to help filter the amount of crap that can potentially go into the pump. Now, hose bridges, that's exact opposite of a hose clamp it's literally a set of hard plastic that you're going to put over the hose so that vehicles can drive over the hose and you don't have to shut the hose down and hose ringers our very last subject as far as i know no one in hood county carries hose ringers and we're not going to go over them When we're practicing our skills with hose, we're going to advance a dry and charged lines of two different sizes. The two sizes we're going to advance are inch and three quarter and a two inch line, and we'll advance those hoses from an apparatus. And we'll go over the techniques and how to work together on how to physically advance that hose line. Cleaning fire hose, couplings, nozzles, and inspecting for damage. You want to know if the fire hose is damaged because you do not want to be making an interior attack with a hose that's leaking water because it's got a bunch of burn spots through it or it's just old. And you don't want to be doing an interior attack with a hose that's not giving you enough water or is potentially about to fail. And the way we're going to find that damage to the hose is through cleaning. So after every structure fire or after every car fire, anytime you're pulling hose from an apparatus and using it, you need to clean it and you need to inspect it. Now the cleaning process is pretty simple. If you look at your picture down below, you can see they just stretch the hose out on the driveway in front of the fire department. You get a water hose out, you wet the hose down, you get a brush out, you get some soap, you scrub the hose, and then you come back across with the water to physically wash all the dirt, the grime, the soot, and the soap out of the hose. Once you've washed one size, you can actually roll the hose back over and that'll take care of cleaning the hose. After you've cleaned the hose, you need to inspect it. You want to know if there's any rips or tears or, and you're looking for exposure and tear in the actual outer shell of the hose. Another factor to consider is the physical couplings. If the couplings are damaged so bad that you can't take the hose and put it back in service, it might be worth considering taking the hose out of service and no longer making it usable. And one thing to talk about real quick with this is, is in the event that you take a hose out of service, there's two ways to take a hose out of service. The first one is to take a hose and roll it up. And when you get to the end, take the hose and just tie a very simple square knot at the end of the hose. It's kind of a universal sign that the hose is bad. It needs to be documented and thrown away. Another way that you can indicate that the hose is bad is the way the hose is physically rolled. Typically the hose, when you start rolling it, you're going to roll it with the threaded side first. And you're going to coil the hose up and you're going to have the threads inside the coil. That's so that as you're deploying the hose, you're helping to protect the threaded end of the hose. But if you take the hose and roll it backwards where the threads are outside, that can also be a potential indicator that there's a problem with the hose. Now, one thing that we have here at Granberry, and I would recommend every department out there going out there and buying one, is we actually have a real simple hose cleaner. And this hose cleaner attaches to the hydrant, and then when we have all of our dirty hose after a structure fire, you just turn the hydrant on, and you just run the hose through the hose cleaner, and it makes the cleaning process a million times easier. Physically cleaning the hose sucks, and if you have a large structure fire, and you have hundreds and hundreds of feet of hose to clean and then ultimately load, cleaning the hose can take a lot of time. Using a hose cleaner makes it ten times easier. 
Connect a fire hose to a hydrant and fully open and close the hydrant. This sounds really simple, but it's been my in my short experience on the department, it's one of the most screwed up tasks on a fire scene. There's so many steps to properly opening and closing a hydrant and getting the getting everything set up to the point of where you're actually sending water from the hydrant to the pumping apparatus. And on top of all this, it can be dangerous if it's done wrong. We're going to go in great detail at how to do this on the skills portion of the of the class. Three types of hose loads and finishes. Now, there's a million different types of hose loads that are in the fire service. I'm only going to talk about the hose loads that we use here in Granbury. I know the surrounding departments around us have some different hose loads that they prefer, but I'm going to cover in detail the hose loads that we use here in Granbury and why we use them. Now, the first one is a very simple hose load and if you look at the picture on the far left you can see it it's just called a simple flat lay and what you're going to do is you're loading the hose in the truck the hose is just going to load on top of itself and it's just going to you're just going to go back and forth filling the compartment and as you go back and forth you're just going to continually lay the hose on top of itself and you're going to create just one large pile of single stacked hose now another hose load that we use often is if you look in the back of this truck again of engine 6, you will see that the next two hose loads on the left and are on the second left and third from the left is still a flat lay, but now the hose loads actually lay next to each other. Okay, and the way this hose loads is you're going to load the hose starting at the top of the truck and you're going to load the hose just on one side of the bed. So you're going to just lay the hose down the left side. You're going to take the hose when you get at the end of the bed, you're going to fold it over and roll it back towards the front of the truck. Halfway down, take the hose and lay it on the right side. What you're going to get is a very long skinny X. And you want the hose, the hose to transition in the middle of the hose lay. And it's just a very simple split load. Now the very last load that we're going to cover is the trifold. And the trifold, it's a pain in the butt to load, but it deploys fantastically on a scene. And it is very, very simple, and it is a very, very efficient load. To deploy from and we're going to talk a lot more detail on in person and we're going to go and practice this load a lot demonstrate three types of hose rolls again we're going to be doing hose rolls that are specific to Granberry, and we really only do these three types of hose rolls the first one is a straight roll the second one's a donut roll, and the third one is a double donut. A straight roll is you're just going to take the hose, empty it out of water, walk the water out of the hose, stretch it out in one long line, go down to the threaded end of the hose, and literally just roll it over on itself. And what you're going to create is one big coil of hose, and that's a straight roll. Now a donut roll is when you take the hose, walk the water out of it, stretch it all the way out, and then grab one end and of grab one coupling and walk it down to the other one. You're effectively folding the hose in half. And then you're going to go back to where the fold is at and you're going to take the fold and you're going to roll it over on itself and you're going to roll the hose up. That is a donut roll. Now a double donut roll is a little more complex and a little harder to describe, and I'm going to save that for the skills portion in the skills night. Two types of hose carries. Now, here in Granbury, we do have a high-rise bag, and we'll emphasize the use on how to deploy the high-rise bag and how to use it. Um, but we really don't have any other very specific hose loads. Now, we do do 
pre-connected hose load carries, but that's just simply deploying the hose. And we'll go over that in a lot more detail in the actual skills portion. Coupling and uncoupling fire hose. We're going to go through a bunch of different methods at how to physically get the fire hose disconnected and then how to transition into loading the hose back. And we will show you in the skills portion of the class at how to one person can disconnect the lines, a two person disconnecting, and then other methods for breaking down stores lines. Also, this is a good thing to ask around at your home departments and see if they have any tips or tricks on how to get this hose together and then also how to break hose down. While you're practicing your skills, one thing we will have you do is work from a ladder with the charged hose line. I don't ever recommend using anything larger than an inch and three quarter. A two inch or even as big as a two and a half inch can get pretty powerful and pretty bad things can happen to you. So we will work with an inch and three quarter on a ladder all the time though. Physically extending a hose line off the truck is pretty easy. It becomes a, a major pain in the butt when you're physically doing an interior fire or if you're having to make a lot of bends and corners outside of the structure. Uh, extending the hose can be exhausting and there's definitely a technique to doing that and we'll go over that with you on the skills portion. A big portion of our hose night is going over how to advance a hose line from a standpipe. Now there is more than one area other than Granberry that will have standpipes. And standpipes are typically found in any building that has more than one story, but also has a sprinkler system. Best examples for this are hotels. Now, if you think about where a truck can park, where the fire might actually be at in the structure, you might need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet of hose just to be able to get to the room. So what we have is we have high-rise bags and we're going to physically connect the fire truck to the standpipe system of the building. And that is a metal pipe and the truck's going to pump water through those pipes. And the high rise bag is going to connect to the standpipe. It's kind of a tricky operation. It's not hard, but there is some technique to it. And we'll be covering this in a lot more detail at the high rise prop there at the training field. Replacing a burst section of hose line. When you're working a structure fire or any other fire incident and you have a burst hose section, you've only got one of two options. The first one is to shut the line down real quick, grab a spare section of hose, break the hose down, and insert the new line into the section. The only other option that you have is to grab a hose jacket off the truck wrap it around the hose section and hopefully that'll be enough to continue to be able to operate the hose until the crew evacuates the building safely. But realistically, our only real option is to shut the line down and continue to replace the hose as prescribed. Inspection and maintenance of fire hose, couplings, nozzles, and the recommended replacement or repair is needed. Now, this is more of a question that you need to ask for your department officers or your chief. And you need to figure out exactly what your inspection and maintenance plan is for your hose and what you do with that hose if you identify a bad section. Here in Granbury, we actually hire a company that comes in and does a lot of this for us. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we just have almost 20,000 feet of hose and it would take forever and just almost the whole year for our volunteers to go through and inspect the line. Now, if you were going to want to do this at your home station, it's a pretty easy process. All you do is stretch the line from your truck and you can do this with everything leading up to and not including 
the supply line. Supply line has a different test procedure. But you just take the hose, stretch it from the truck, put it in a straight line, and then you're literally going to put the truck in pump gear, engage the pump, and you're going to slowly increase the pressure to 250 PSI, and it needs to run at 250 PSI with zero water flowing for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you're going to shut the truck down, and you're going to go and you're going to make sure that there's no burst or seeping leaks or spraying leaks from the hose. If that hose is leaking, it has failed. Another thing that you can test, and you can look at the picture for this, is is the coupling slipping? And the way you're going to do that is, is that the hose uncharged, you're going to take a permanent marker and you're going to run a ring around the base of the coupling around the hose. Once you charge the hose, what you're going to be looking for is to see if that coupling is slipped. If the ring is starting to expand away from the actual coupling. If that's happening, you have a bad hose and it needs to be replaced. Now the inspection of the supply line is a little bit different. The supply line, you have to test in lengths no longer than 300 feet, but you can take the, you can connect it to the truck, cap the end of the supply line, and pressurize it up to 200 psi, no water flowing, and let it fl- run that way for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, same thing. Walk the supply line, check for leaks, check if it's seeping water, check for bulges in the hose jacket. And then lastly, check the couplings. Make sure the couplings haven't slipped. The one thing I'm going to add to this is is if you've never done hose testing, you don't just run out there and decide to go do this this one day. Remember, you're testing equipment at its absolute maximum. If the equipment fails, it can kill you. And unfortunately, every few years, I know there's stories... On light of duty death reports of firefighters killed during hose testing. The hose they're testing comes apart. The coupling goes flying through the air. And unfortunately it struck the individual in the head and it killed them. So don't take hose inspection as a light manner. It's serious. You have to be careful with this stuff. You're operating at maximum pressures. Now, after the hose testing document it. And the easiest way to do this is just write the date of the inspection on the hose. And you just do the month and the year. If you have any other questions about hose testing, you can jump online and search. Uh, You can also talk to your fire department officers. They're going to have recommendations and suggestions on hose testing and inspection and documentation. And then lastly, you can always ask the instructors in the class. Hydrant to fire apparatus hose connections. Again, we'll practice this in extent at the training field. You will go over this a ton on the skills night. Proper adapters, appliances, nozzles, hose for given different situations. That is the whole purpose of the rookie school, and that is the whole purpose of the skills night, is to help answer all these situations and scenarios so that you do know what the proper piece of equipment is for what you're trying to accomplish. The skills will help you teach all, teach and learn all this material. All fire hose is not created equal. Hose classification by attack, supply, or intake. A tack hose is what's pictured right here. It's going to be a cloth jacketed hose with some type of rubber sleeve on the inside. And when the water is not flowing through the hose, the hose is going to be very pliable and flexible. Now supply line is a very large, thick rubber jacketed hose. And supply line is going to be used for moving a massive amount of water, typically from a hydrant or a large storage tank to the fire apparatus. Intake hose, suction hose, drafting hose, is going to be a very hard, rigid plastic shell on the outside of the hose. 
The reason that the intake or drafting hose is hard is because we don't want the hose to physically collapse in on itself. The purpose of this hose, again, is to be thrown in a lake or in a river or in a swimming pool, and it's to suck the water out of that water source into the pump. And if the hose isn't hard and rigid, the hose will just collapse down on itself, not allowing any water to pass. types of fire hose couplings. There's two types of fire hose couplings that we deal with day in and day out. The first one is the physical couplings that's on the actual hose that comes off the trucks. And that's going to be a threaded hose. You're going to have a male, which is going to be the threads, and a female, which is going to be where the threads screw into. The other type of coupling that we deal with is the stores. And stores couplings are typically typically associated with the big discharges off the truck, and they're also with the hydrants. The difference between a stores and a threaded coupling is a stores has got a big twist lock, and when you twist the coupling into itself, it's also got safety latches that you have to lift and close as the coupling com- completely turns on itself. It's a safety feature to keep the hose from coming apart. And again, we'll cover this in the skills section. When you're inside a house making an interior attack, you'll have zero visibility. And sometimes you need to know either for a non-emergent exit or potentially an emergency exit at how to get out of the structure quickly. And what you can do is you can actually feel the couplings on the hose. Now the saying that I use is smooth bump bump to the pump. And what I'm talking about is if you look at the coupling in the picture, the female end of the coupling attaches to the male. And the female coupling has a smooth and then it actually has the bumps for the coupling and then the bumps for the male coupling. So smooth bump bump to the pump. Another way to remember this is the male always goes to the fire. So you can use the hose and physically not be able to seal it, but you can feel it and know which way's out.